Welcome to Lecture Online. The fact that the Earth has an elliptical orbit does cause the Earth to be sometimes closer to the Sun and sometimes farther away. So let's take a look at these numbers and see if that makes sense to us. So first of all, if we imagine the Earth to be over here at the closest point to the Sun, that's called the perihelion. That happens around January the 3rd. And then here we can then say that here this, the, sun, the Earth is at the farthest point away from the Sun. We call that the aphelion. Now that distance from the Earth from here to there, that distance is called the major axis. And the average distance between the Earth and the Sun would then be half the major axis. You can see that sometimes the Earth is closer, sometimes the Earth is farther away, but if you take the total distance divided by 2, you get the average distance between the Earth and the Sun, and that average distance is about 93 million miles, which is about 149.5 million kilometers, for those who like kilometers better than miles. It's also known as an astronomical unit. An astronomical unit is the average distance between the Earth and the Sun. Now, when the Earth is closest to the Sun, that's in the northern hemisphere's winter, and we have, therefore, since we're closer, we receive more energy from the Sun, we have, therefore, warmer winters. Also, when the Earth is closer to the Sun, it moves fast in its orbit. That means also the winters are shorter. Over here, during the northern hemisphere summer, the Earth is farther away from the Sun, and therefore, we receive less energy from the Sun, and therefore, our summers are then cooler. And when we're farther away from the Sun, the Earth travels slower in its orbit, and so therefore the summers take longer because the Earth is moving slower, spends more time farther away from the Sun, and therefore we have cooler summers. It turns out the summers are about six days longer than the winters, or you can take a look at it and say the winters are about six days shorter than the summers. Now, at the closest point, at perihelion, the Sun is about 91.4 million miles away, which is 147.5 kilometers, kilo kilometers of approximately, and at the farthest point, the, sun, the Earth is about 94.5 million miles away, which is about 152.1 million kilometers. So what does that do to the energy reception? Well, it turns out that at its closest, the Earth is about 3.2% closer to the Sun than at its farthest. And since the energy, the intensity of the energy, the intensity that we receive from the Sun is proportional to 1 over the distance squared, so I is proportional to 1 divided by the radius of the orbit squared, therefore, if we square that number, we can then see that the Earth receives about 6.5% more energy when it's closer to the Sun, or 6.5% less energy when it's farther away from the Sun. 6.5% more energy in our northern hemisphere winters means we get a lot more energy, therefore our winters are not as cold, and we get 6.5% less energy in the summer, therefore the summers are relatively cooler. So it does have a tremendous effect on the climate of the Earth. Of course, it's not going to stay that way. It turns out that in about 12,000 years, the Earth will be over here instead of over here. So in the northern hemisphere winter, we'll be farther away from the sun, we'll be traveling slower, so our winters will be longer, and we'll be receiving 6.5% less energy. Of course, that's not exactly true because the orbit of the Earth, although it's an ellipse, the shape of the ellipse changes as well. It goes through 100,000 year cycles, and so that has an effect on the Earth's orbit and the Earth's climate as well. But if we ignore that for a moment, if we assume that the ellipse will stay at the same shape, which of course we know it doesn't, then if the Earth gets over here, it will receive 6.5% less energy during our winters, and our winters will be bitter cold. It turns out sometimes the shape, the, the um, Earth's elliptical orbit will become more eccentric, as we call it, more elliptical if you want to think, think about it, and the Earth can even be farther away from the Sun, causing the Earth even to cool down even more during our winter time, and even have more harsher and severe winters. And when that kind of thing happens, that's very likely that the next ice age will then ensue. I'll have some additional videos on that so you can take a look at that, and it's kind of interesting pretty exciting actually to think about how all that affects our life on the Earth. But at least now you have a good idea about what the major axis is, what the semi-major axis is, what the perihelion, the aphelion is, when those happen, what that does to the speed at which the Earth goes around the Sun, and what, it hap what that does to the length of the summer and the winter, and how that affects the, uh, the proximity to the Sun and the amount of energy that we receive, and therefore the temperature on the Earth is very much dependent upon the motions of the Earth around the Sun.